I want you to think of your favorite songs that Southside produced. For me, No Heart and both. I've been bumping those songs since 2016 and I will for the rest of my life. Southside has contributed to paving the way to hip hop and trap production as we know it today. You might recognize his signature sound by his turnt and dark beats and of course, his hi-hat rolls. I'm gonna be showing you the whole process of how you can make these style of beats from the melodies to the hi-hats, to the 808s, to the layout. Real quick though, I'm super close to 10K on Instagram and I'm gonna be dropping a free analog lab bank once I hit 10K. So if you enjoy videos like this one and want a free analog lab bank, then it would mean a lot to me if you followed me on there. But let's get into it. There we go. Make sure you have a good view on the MIDI keyboard for my amazing piano playing skills. So the first step to these kind of beats is going to be your sample. And you can either choose a sample that you like or just make your own. But here are three must-knows about Southside samples that he uses. Number one, majority of them are going to be dark or evil and up-tempo. Number two, there's always usually a catchy and repetitive sound, whether this is like a flute or a violin or a choir or a bell. There's always something that you hear that makes you remember the melody, something that you can almost hum to. And number three, the samples are the type of samples that are like begging to have drums on them. I don't know if you know what I mean, but like you ever listen to a sample and you just know that drums need to be on that sample? Those are the kind of samples that he uses, so just keep that in mind while you're making these. So to start off, I have this sound in Omnisphere. Really unique pad sound, which I like. First, we gotta get a good pattern, so I'm just gonna test around, see what I can come up with. We'll go tomato today. I'm just gonna have this repeating and I'm gonna layer this with another sound now. This is kind of fitting into creating that catchy repetitive pattern. We're getting somewhere. We're gonna layer this again and I'm adding so many different layers to this because I'm gonna add an effect VST, something that I can just utilize to morph this all into one sample that sounds really unique. Okay, now I want something to feel like more of the lower at more of like the lower mid end. Also, do you notice how I'm only using one chord progression throughout the entire 8-bar loop? That's because once I flip this sample into something more unique, it'll be a unique sample playing in just one progression, and this will give me a lot more choice to choose where I want to go with my root notes, with my secondary melodies. I'm just gonna do some leveling. Let's try to throw some halftime on there. Let's put like 5%. Let's go to portal. Record this. Okay, so just to explain what I did, I put this portal effect on the sample itself. So I just went to Edison and then recorded that. I got this part right here. Then I just exported that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna reverse it, pitch it up one whole octave, and then I'm gonna shorten it to two bars. So we're gonna consolidate this as a sample. Now we're gonna route this to a channel. Guess what we're gonna do? Gonna put more portal on it. <laughs> so I chopped it up into this loop right here. Let's pitch it up. That's hard. So it'll be a switch up. So from this to this. However, both of these right now need some EQing to them, so I'm going to route both of these to a channel. So, um, let's find parametric EQ. Now we're going to put some Soothe on this. I actually just got this plugin Soothe, and I've been loving it. I don't really have the plugin, I just have the trial version, so I have like 15 more days of using it. So now once you have the main part of your sample down, then you just want to add whatever other melodies that you were talking about. And also just think about what frequencies need to be filled. So when I listen to this, I'm thinking high end and low end mostly. Pretty much the mid end to the low mid end is covered by all of this right here.
If you guys are enjoying this video or found any value from this video, then I'd appreciate it if you subscribe so I can keep on making videos like this one. Okay, so I have this phrase from an unreleased kit that I'm working on. I'll just let you guys listen to this. It's a perfect violin that I want for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to route this to a channel. And I'm going to put some halftime on this. Now lastly, I'm just going to get the root notes down. Route the piano to a channel and then just take out some of the low end. All right, so now that we have our sample down, we're going to move on to the drums. First, what you want to do is you want to get your clap and snare pattern down. So I'm going to go to my hardwired multi kit and I'm going to get this clap right here. Scarfield. you can really do to take this to the next level is to add a snare roll at the end and i'm not talking like a snare roll right at the end here like i'm talking about a snare roll that starts like right here you want to go to the one third beat right here so let's say i want the last note of my snare to be on c5 then i'll go up to c6 and that's where i'll start and i'll work my way down There you go. And by the way, I have a massive kit coming soon with a bunch of snare rolls, bunch of midis, bunch of analog lab presets, bunch of phrases, accents. So just stay tuned for that. Just stay tuned. Next, what you want to do is you want to put in your kick pattern as a substitute for your 808. And I talked about this in the last video, my Wheezy video. And this is actually one of my go-tos now when it comes to making my drums. You just want to get that basic bounce down with a kick and a clap, and then you can start to add your hi-hats after that. Next, you want to find the right hi-hat, so this hi-hat right here, this is the most common one that's used. Now to the main part of the video, the hi-hat rolls. We all know Southside's hi-hat rolls, here's how you do them. First, what I like doing is I just get a two-step pattern on my hi-hats, make sure that I cut itself right here. Then I like to solo out the drum, so, so I have this. And then when you're making this, you want to focus on adding rolls in the right places. So you want to add rolls based on where the kicks, the claps, and the snares are hitting. A lot of this just comes with practice and finding out where hi-hat rolls sound the best. But if you just focus on adding your hi-hat rolls in the spaces in between or leading up to where the kicks hitting, the claps hitting, the snares hitting, the main components of your drums, then you'll probably put your hi-hats in the right places. When I play this, I can kind of picture where I want the rolls like... I want one right here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this hi-hat right here. Then I'm going to extend it for however long I want the roll. And then I'm going to highlight it and then press Alt plus U. Alt U at the same time is going to pull up this chopper here. If we listen, then it does the roll exactly for you. So you don't have to put it in yourself. And then if you just change this time multiplier right here, then you can change how fast you want your roll to be. And then next, I'm going to change the notes of the hi-hat roll to see where it sounds best. I'm going to do the same thing where I want the other roll. You can also do this where you get a roll, then you put some notes up and then have it kind of leading down. And I usually just get a four bar hi-hat pattern and then just repeat it. Once you have all your hi-hat rolls down, then you want to change the velocity of them. If you have a mouse, then you can just right click right here. So I want the roll to start right here and then I want it to kind of fade down. It moves pretty much linear to exactly how you want it. And now here's the real sauce for you guys, okay? Spend a decent amount of time getting your hi-hat roll exactly how you want it. You know, get it, like, tweak it to ex exactly how you want it. And then once you're done with that, then go here file export as a midi file save all your complex and unique hi-hat midis for yourself if i keep on saving hi-hat midis then what i can do is i can just get my hi-hat just load it in then just drag in a midi and it'll be exactly how i want it to be without spending all that extra time so spend time in the beginning getting your hi-hats right but save the midis of them so that you can just save yourself a lot of time wherever i put the kicks down i'm just going to put the 808 <laughs> By the way, this 808 this is my cutthroat 808 from my hardwired multi kit.
And now lastly, real quick for the layouts of these beats, usually what I see is Southside has like an eight bar intro and then it goes straight into the drums. It'll either be that or he'll just have all the drums hitting at once. This is gonna be the main component here, intro, hook, verse and then a breakdown or maybe the intro again and then just repeat that three times and make sure that when you're switching from your hook to your verse that you add in drums take out drums add in melodies take out melodies all i gotta do now is i just gotta mix this and then i'm gonna lay it out and you guys will be able to listen to the full beat let me know down in the comments what other videos you guys want to see challenges dropping more sauce about producers vsts all types of stuff just let me know down in the comments i post a lot of content on instagram if you want to tap in with me on there at prod lucent i'm very close to 10k very close. If you could help me get there, there'll be a prize for you. Some sort of free kit or something. I'm, I'm planning it for you guys. But anyways, y'all, that wraps it up for me. Here's the full beat. I'm out. Play that back, Lucy.